share some things that I've been discovering. Um, it, it really started for me in a book that I read by a guy named Brian Sykes, who's a forensic DNA specialist, and he wrote a book called The Seven Daughters of Eve. And as I was reading this book, from his insights into the science of DNA, I got one revelation of a biblical nature, one right after the other, right after the other. And so I wanted to attempt to share some of these things with you uh, today. Uh, I'm calling this Adam and the Reboot of Humanity, or Adam 2.0. Uh, when we talk about DNA, we're talking about really uh, a molecule that is a super um, fantastic duplication machine. That's what it does. Its whole job is to duplicate itself. But what it's duplicating is the instructions to every cell in a living organism as to what it's supposed to do and how it's supposed to come together. And that's our original design from God. This is literally the code of the human organism that God created. Um, you need to know just a couple of things about DNA to make sense of this. First of all, there's two main kinds of DNA. We get DNA from our fathers and from our mothers. Paternal A, scientists call Y DNA. You get that from your dad. The maternal DNA, the stuff that comes from your mother, is also called MT DNA, mitochondrial DNA. And so there's some things we need to, to know about both of these. But to start off, let's first make the assumption or the uh, the come to the conclusion that if we believe what we read in the Bible, that there was a first man, that there was a creator, then that man, Adam, got 100% of his Y DNA, his paternal DNA, from God, who was then in quite a literal sense his father. Now this DNA that Adam got was the original design. And when God made that DNA helix, he said, wow, this is very good. It was per perfection personified. It literally could not be made better. Adam was perfection. And so how did creation go? Well, Adam would not be complete with just Y DNA. He had to have mitochondrial DNA or, or this maternal DNA. And yet we all know Adam didn't have a mother, right? So first of all, let's cover what is mitochondrial DNA? Mitochondrial DNA is really interesting. And for to understand the DNA, DNA is coming from a thing called the mitochondria. The mitochondria is an open space in every cell of your body where oxygen and fuel come together and produce what they call ATP energy. What it's called doesn't matter. The fact that you can produce energy in your cells makes human life possible and really every kind of life on the planet. And we need these open spaces for oxygen and fuels, our nutrients, to come together. Without them, we'd be inert. Um, so life's impossible without mitochondria, yet science agrees. Science has found out something so fascinating about mitochondria. And I just want to read you a brief quote from The Seven Daughters of Eve that really got me thinking. How did all this come about? The current explanation is stunning. It is thought that mitochondria were once free living bacteria that hundreds and millions of years ago, according to the author, invaded more advanced cells and took up residence there. You could call them parasites. You could call their relationship with the cells symbiotic, with both cells and mitochondria doing something for each other. The point is that mitochondria is thought to have been completely separate from living cells at one point, and yet that's impossible. The cell couldn't be living with mitochondria. Now they postulate maybe it clung to the outside and there was transfer of nutrients and eventually the mitochondria decided it was more comfortable inside and moved in or something. But however it happened, scientists believe that mitochondria was once separate. Now, one of the reasons they believe this is because the mitochondria DNA is round. Yes, it's round. Now, we all know DNA looks like this, right? But in mitochondria, the ends are connected, it's round, and that's so weird because you do not find that in life on planet Earth, except in bacteria. So at one point or other, we got bacterial DNA and it became essential to our life. 
Now, how did that happen? If all of these things are required for life, if mitochondria is in, required for life and yet it was once separate, when did they come together? I believe that place and that time was what the Bible calls the Garden of Eden. And at the very time of creation, God put them together into a human being. Now here's the funny thing. What was Eden's soil made out of? We know there were tons of trees and plants growing there, animals running around, all this stuff. What was the soil made out of? It was brand new. Soil is decaying dead matter and ground up rock and sand and mud. None of that was available in Eden. What was the soil of Eden? Well, God actually tells us in the Bible, it says he formed Adam out of red earth. We don't know what this red earth was. It wasn't the same as normal earth because normal earth didn't exist yet. He formed Adam out of red earth. And in fact, the name Adam actually means red earth. We're literally mud men and mud women. You know, we're made out of this red earth, but what is red earth? And I want to propose to you that I have come to the conclusion that red earth of Eden, the literally the agar out of which all the plants of Eden were growing, everything was in contact with, you guessed it, mitochondria. The ground of Eden was pure mitochondria and everything could live because everything had its roots in contact with that. But Adam couldn't live. He needed it in his cells. So God formed the mitochondria together in the shape of a man and then breathed into him and he became a living being. What he injected through his breath was Adam's perfect helix DNA. And that's when we started. Humanity equals Adam equals red earth. It's all the same word in the Hebrew. Wow. Well, um, pure mitochondria, that's when it came in. Interesting insight. Who was Adam's father? God. God provided his Y DNA. Who was Adam's mother? Earth. Wow, we might have common ground with the New Agers, okay? And we can have a starting point for conversation. I believe Earth was our mother too, but she was created just a little bit before by a loving God, a divine spark. Okay, well, the other thing we need to know about mitochondrial uh, DNA is that um, the helix is connected at the ends, it's in a circle, and there's a thing in the mitochondrial DNA, a piece of it, that's called the control zone. And it's very unintuitive. The control zone doesn't actually do anything. It's a place where old mutations build up. Things that the mitochondria tried to do as it kind of connected with the cell that didn't work. And so it's kind of a junkyard of failed mutations. But through that, we can trace mitochondria back through the ages, through the millennia, so that living humans today, we can trace them back literally to Eve. Everybody through their mothers, 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 all the way back because mitochondria keeps a record. And that's such a help to us. Something we've never been able to do before. It's perfect for tracking because every cell in your body has a record dating back to Eve. Now, we already covered Adam's mother, and also Eve's mother, because Eve was made out of Adam, taken out of his side, was Earth, okay? And um, that's where mankind comes from. DNA um, mutates over time, and you can measure the amount of time it takes before a successful mutation takes hold. That's how we can trace things back and see who people came from and everything. It's mutations over the centuries and years. Now, Adam had 100% of his DNA chromosomes from God, his father, his Y DNA. In Genesis chapter 3, we read the account of how by turning away from God in rebellion, he actually damages his DNA. The first mutation happens in Genesis chapter 3. His DNA was perfect. And then all of a sudden, with one bite of a piece of fruit, something broke something broke that is broken to this day and that's how mutations work they continue down adam passed that on to his children and his children all the way down to us well down uh, he damaged that perfect dna and he introduced what i like to call the gsf mutation guilt 
shame, and fear entered the human race in one moment. And you see all of them in Genesis chapter 3. You just read through there and the effects of sin, guilt, shame, and fear are clearly evident as Adam encounters God for the first time after his sin. And he passed that GSF mutation onto his offspring, to Eve's offspring, through their DNA. And GSF continues to mutate. And mankind has many more uh, damaging features now than even that first generation did. Okay, God, the last thing he said to Adam and Eve as he was ushering them out of the garden to the new reality that they'd chosen for themselves by separation from him is, I'm going to fix this. Okay, he said it with some fancier language than that, and there was something about the seed of the woman, and that's all very significant. But if you add it all together, that's God saying, you don't get the last word. You mess things up. You, you, you really um, put some twists in the plot here, Eve and Adam, but I'm going to fix this. I get the last word. You were created for intimacy with me, and we're going to have that. And so God has a plan to redeem humanity, to reboot the human race. Now, remembering that paternal DNA is from your father and mitochondrial maternal DNA is from your mother, let's take a look at Jesus, or as I like to call him, Adam 2.0. Jesus had 100% of his paternal DNA from his father. Who was Jesus' father? Not Joseph. God. Jesus received absolutely no Y DNA from any human walking the earth. He got it the exact same way and from the exact same source as Adam. Now you might think, well, God had, you know, I don't know, 4,000 something years to, or more, or billions, depending on what your scientific basis for understanding these things are, years and years and years to improve on that, right? So Jesus probably got better improved DNA than Adam. Wrong. When you're perfect, like God, and you're starting out with perfection, there's nowhere up to go. The prototype DNA of humanity was still on the shelf of the lab, so to speak. And that's what God used in Jesus. Jesus got the same DNA as Adam. That first DNA of creation that God said was very good. Now Jesus then, I hope you get the implications of what I just said. Here's the shocking part. Okay, hold on to your armchair, or your sofa. I'm going to say something really shocking. Jesus was quite literally an, an accurate scientific representation of him would be to say that he was a clone of Adam. Jesus was the first human clone, made by God, not by scientists in a laboratory. He was a clone of Adam. Now the New Testament actually says this. It says he was like unto Adam in every way, a second Adam. We've known he was a clone for years, but we've never had the language or the science to even know what that meant. So we thought it was figurative language. It's quite literal. He was a clone of Adam. He was made out of the same DNA, had the same programming informing his cells and his development. Now, where did he get his maternal DNA, his mtDNA? Ah, here's where it gets interesting. A human female was employed for that. A Jewish teenage girl named Mary or Miriam uh, was provided the human DNA for the embryo that became Jesus. Now, why? Well, there's a number of reasons. First of all, God promised through the seed of the woman, your salvation will come and the serpent will get his head crushed. Not through the seed of the man. He never promised that to Adam. He promised it to Eve. Why a human woman? And it wasn't because she was perfect. She was part of fallen humanity. Fallen humanity had to provide Jesus because he couldn't redeem us if he wasn't us. He needed to be fully us and fully God. And so Jesus got his maternal DNA, his mitochondria didn't come straight from Mother Earth. It came down through hundreds, maybe thousands of women, mother to daughter, mother to daughter, mother to daughter, all the way from Eve. And then what happens when your computer goes on the fritz and you call tech support? Well, 
usually you get somebody in India who explains to you that the first thing you need to do is unplug it and let it completely go dead and then start it again. And um, this often just fixes it right there. What you need is a reboot. God needed a reboot on the human race. We damaged ourselves, we mutated our DNA in such a way that we could never enjoy fellowship with God. He had to fix it, just as he promised. And so in Jesus, God sets out to fix, to reboot mankind's DNA. So he provides perfect DNA. He had a back door. The designer developed a back door into the software where he could reach in in human history and reinsert the original operating system. You know, sometimes tech support gives you the bad news. We need to do a complete wipe and reinstall the operating system. Well, God didn't do a complete wipe. He knew that parts of it were salvageable, but he couldn't allow the corruption to come in from human DNA. He had to restart that. So here's the deal. Jesus had completely separate blood from his mother. Babies, embryos have a different blood supply than their mothers. His blood was produced by that DNA helix that his dad provided, that God provided. Adam's DNA formed perfect, unsullied, unfallen blood for Jesus Christ. The mother's blood and the baby's blood never touch. They can be different blood types because, because the placenta is a transferring device for nutrients and they do not come together. It could be fatal for both of them if their blood types were different enough. So his blood was completely untainted from that of fallen humanity. He is the only human being since Adam who ever walked this planet with completely untainted blood. That blood, that placenta that God thought out in advance, he's amazing, okay? That placenta allowed him to reboot the human race. He was able, by this means, to create blood within a human being that could restore, not just uh, atone for that human being's sins and restore that human being, but restore all mankind. Perfect, untainted, Edenic, blood right there in the first century BC. You know, it's just, it blows your mind. And God was able through this mechanism to do precisely what he promised. He said, I'm going to fix this. And he did it through Jesus Christ. The second Adam, he rebooted the human race. And that's the rest of the story.